Okay, everyone, we have bullied Jesse into a uh, level up. We have bullied Jesse into making our fungal friend uh, regain consciousness. Now let's kick his NPC's butts and bully him on our way. look down upon the former uh, leader of the circle and have, and then you resurrected for Lena's parents and uh, also got dressed after being naked in the dirt and uh, <laughs> you guys uh, had a big discussion and Sporlina's father decided to take up the mantle as the druid circle leader for now. Uh, he did explain that Sporlina's true position was probably be, to be leader, but Sporlina declined for now and said that she wishes to stay and continue on her journey. Uh, the, your mother gave you some supplies as you guys tried to figure out what your next moves were. Sporlina trained some of the different funglets on how to transform into different underdark beings, such as spiders, that might be able to help them out. Uh, and then they sent you on your way saying that they are not the only druid circle here in the fungi forest. There are many others. And the more that you can collect and potentially uh, win over to your side, the better. So you guys begin traveling through the fungi forest, looking around uh, the different exotic materials and fungi uh, until you came across these very large bulbous kind of gray fungi but as you investigate a little bit further, you notice that the protrusions coming out of these fungi were actually bone. Uh, Barry had a heyday and uh, absorbed quite a few of these bones out of these fungi, but you heard some fighting down the way. Uh, Kalor went to go sneak ahead, and as he did, he saw a fun giant uh, with being attacked by several drow uh, invaders. After some altercations, you guys launched into battle, and that is where we are beginning our session. Ooh, hiccup. <laughs> All right, Elora, uh, I have you floating in the air. Uh, you have some sort of a guard on you, maybe a shield or shield of faith. It's my blood armor. Blood armor, and then uh, the heart is something else. Barry is holding on to this elite warrior, drow elite warrior. And then I believe, yeah, uh, that's, no, that's the captain, not the elite warrior. That is a captain. The rest of these are elite warriors. Uh, this guy is concentrating on your levitation. He's also marked from something, and I can't remember what. Uh, the fun giant is somehow barely alive, and the rest of the elite warriors are around a berry as Elora is up in the air about 40 feet. Elora, what would you like to do? The uh, heart is... Um is bardic inspiration gotcha okay uh you said i'm like 40 feet up is that yeah you were on top of barry and then you were levitated so that puts you to around 40 feet right 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 not great at a distance uh okay well we're gonna take uh barry's turn <clears throat> barry's turn first uh, and he is going to, um, so I actually, you, this isn't part of my bone golem, Jesse, but when we were playing in, uh, Rhiannon's one shot, um, we kind of determined that that rip apart is really <laughs> powerful. So I put it on a D6 recharge of a five or a six. Just if, and I've been okay, to that. I think I also lowered the damage, uh, and I thought that I updated it, but I don't think it was updated. I up, I no. think it was twenty d six or something, and it's supposed to be ten d six now. You have it as ten d twelve. Ten d twelve. What a dumbass. Uh, all right. Well, it is what it is. So, okay. Uh, I like the recharge idea. Thank cool. You. All right. Uh, so I will just <laughs> will not do his rip apart. Instead, he is going to. He is going to do uh, hurl bones for one of his attacks at the con concentrate. Uh huh. 
Enhance is that. 26 to hit. I think it will hit. 14 points of damage. Plus 15. Uh, concentration. Draw elite. Concentration. 19. It's going to save. Okay. Um, seeing that that didn't work, he is going to... Um, actually... I think he glared at that one last time, and he's paralyzed. Uh, I think that's what that's what, what the symbol is for, yeah. All right. So, real quick question: I don't know. I don't think we talked about this last time. Can someone who's paralyzed maintain concentration? Uh, yeah. Paralyzation is just a physical effect, not a mental. Okay. Well, in that case, he actually took uh, an additional nine damage. Uh, it doesn't make any difference for his concentration check, but it is a critical hit. Okay, paralyzed creature incapacitated. Hold on. Uh, let me read what incapacitated. Sure. Maybe incapacitated. Uh, an incapacitated can't take actions or reactions. Doesn't say anything about holding concentration. Creature automatically. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. But yeah. Yeah. So yeah, they're still holding concentration. Got it. All right. So you guys see Barry pull out a skull with like a spine attached to it and launch it at this paralyzed dude as he takes some damage. Uh, extra, would you say nine? Uh, yep. All right. Uh, it's not a critical. Uh, again, to see. It is a critical because uh, he's paralyzed. I think that's only melee. Hold on. Let me double I think check. it's uh, any uh, attack. Uh, attack rolls against a creature have advantage. Any attack that hits the creature is a critical hit. Uh, any attack. If the attacker is within five feet of the creature. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Um, it does look like, though, you, you lose concentration if you're incapacitated. Cool. That's that's super cool. That's I have never played that right. That's my bad. Um, but yeah, apparently incapacitated does break concentration. Can't take actions or reactions. I mean, that's all that incapacitated says. Can't take actions or reactions. Hmm. Where'd you read that sage advice? I just I, I googled it. Uh, I think it was off of uh, a roll twenty page. It says being incapacitated or killed breaks concentration. Oh well. All right. So then you fall. And nice and you... She does I not take damage me. from levitate. Por qué? Le levitate slowly drops you to the ground like feather fall. Boom. Yes. I know. Yes. <laughs> it's so it's because you can't hurt people with it. Uh, I will say I dropped off of Barry. I read up a little bit more on mounted combat, and he actually can't attack while I'm mounted on him. Um, in control of him, at least. So I'll land on the ground. And uh, we're going to go ahead. Uh, he's got three more attacks, so he's just going to pound the dude. He's already got attack. Uh, he's already got uh, health. All right. And 18 will just hit. The 21 will hit, too, because he's got the grappler feet. So he has an advantage. Ah. All right. So that's 20... 32 plus 32. Thank you, Kurtz. Yep. Uh, and then, <clears throat> Elora, uh, we were we were like in the second half of our day during when we caught this fire. Yeah. Okay, then I'm going to go ahead and burn my fourth level spell. Uh, my new fourth level spell, as Elora hits the ground, she looks up and her eyes melt out of her skull and burst into flames. Uh, she opens her mouth and her teeth begin to rot and fall out and long, sharp teeth take take their place. And then there's a, a splat on the guy behind her as uh, two holes rip open in her skull and two long horns begin to curl back behind her as I cast Visage of Madness. I need all foes that can see me within 30 feet to make a wisdom saving. In front of you or... Uh, would it be like a every foe attack? that's within 30 feet of you and sees you makes a wisdom save. Well, Mark Sinna down is scared and horny. It's only full. <laughs> what kind of saving throw? Sorry. Wisdom. All right. Captain is this guy. Uh, nope. And the rest of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, Sporlina. She's not a foe. Gotcha. Wait, why didn't it roll? Damn it. Oh, I'm, I'm a foe, all right. And what's your save? 18. I 
clicked all the buttons and it's not running. Click. Just click, roll five d twenty. It's about to roll seven hundred of them now. Ding dang, roll twenty, taking forever. I'm gonna keep that fifteen, and it's a fail. And I'm rolling four d twenty, and it's still not rolling. Damn it. Fail. Oh my gosh, it's taking forever. All right. Do you see my rolls there? We could just use. Them. Oh, my connection is poor. Great. Can you guys hear me still? Well, yeah, we can hear yeah. you. Yeah, we can hear you. Maybe it's just your old 20 connect. Okay. Oh, there okay. it goes. Here we go. Uh, one pass, and the rest fail. Cool. Uh, third pass. This is going to be so fun. What does that do? All right, so this is, <laughs> is going to be a little work on your end, Jesse. Uh, I need you to roll a D6 for each of them, and they do that much damage to themselves plus their strength modifier. As they begin to claw at their eyes. All right. If I looked like that, I'd claw out my eyes too. And then uh, let me know if any of those are sixes. I guess I could roll since you're having a problem. If you. Yeah. Uh, can you see them? Yeah. Uh, no, nothing. Them? Nothing's popped up for us yet. Okay, it's a roll 20 issue then. Hold on. All right, everyone, run, get your dice right now. Go. I mean, our dice is working fine. Mine are it's just you. Your... Yeah. I was going to say, so mine you are run and get your dice. God. Dun, 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 dun. Almost sounds like Aladdin. What part the. The part where he's is going it, into right. the cave. Just that, that low, that low horn, the womp. You think womp, ba ba womp, ba ba womp, bum, ba Fair enough. All right. Uh, okay, so Captain takes two pluses. They all take plus strength, so. All right. Their strength is Elite Warrior is plus one. Captain's plus two. Okay, you still have a couple more to go because they all failed except for one. Uh, here we go. Oh, I'm rolling. Sorry. Here yeah. We go. Uh, that is a six for the first one. Okay. So the captain, yeah, so then we'll go left to... Six plus two is eight. Six pl oh, those are d4s. Okay, six plus two. Okay, so he is permanently blinded as he pulls his eyes out of his head. Blinded by the fright. And he right. takes, yeah, the, that and as damage. I'm going to go... I'm going to go bottom right there. Okay. That's a one. This one right here. That's another one. This one right here is a two. This one right here is another two. This one right here is a one. This one right here, uh-oh, three. Okay. So they all take that plus their strength and damage. And then the ones that didn't claw their eyes out are blinded for four rounds. All right, I'll let you keep track of that then. Okay. All right, anything uh, else? <laughs> uh, well, that was my action. Uh, bonus action. Uh, I think I'm good. So I will... Uh, uh, which, one didn't, which one did succeed? The uh, third to last one. So this guy right in front of me. Awesome. <laughs> All right, so he's the only one that's not blinded. Awesome. Okay, cool, cool, cool. We're gonna... Hey, Lord. Okay. Oh, man. There's a guy, he's right next to me, doing the things and the stuff. I, I don't like that he's doing the things and the stuff. So so we're 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 gonna we're gonna bad touch him. Hopefully. We'll see if we can bad touch him. Alright. Noise. By by the way, my wife just uh gave me popcorn. Nice. And she came up behind me and touched my shoulder, scared the fucking shit out of me. I love that. Hi. <laughs> that happens to me at work all the time. So many wives bringing me popcorn. Uh, 29 to hit. Bitch, if they're going to make you popcorn, they better come here and help pay bills. 29 That's to hit. That's our work Absolutely life. Hit. Okay, so uh, yeah, they need to make a... And... 
Okay, they spill. Okay, on the hit, yeah, they take the damage, and I regen the number of hit points equal to half of the damage dealt. And yeah, that's it. So I get a whole four HP, assuming they're not resistant to necrotic or something. Uh, nope, they are not. That was an exactly average amount of damage to do. Yep. <laughs> All right. Uh, Cinemoira. All right. I got to go around and help my brother here. 25. All right. So I. Yep, that's great. I need. My computer to work. Why aren't you working? There you go. Yay. Okay, I am going to use my rapier. I need the hit. Well, absolutely hit roll advantage, just in case. Oh, yes, forgot. Sorry. No problem. That's why I'm here. I appreciate it. Even better. Ooh. 12 points of damage as you Damn. slash them right in the back. Nice. And I am going to give Kalor some bardic inspiration. I already have it. Oh, wait. He does? Oh, crap. He does. No, you, you, he said Kalor, not Alora. Oh, sure. Sorry. Sorry. Kalor. Oh, I. The purple showed up. Just Jeez. as you were saying that, so I'm like, I, I went back and forth too much. Okay. That'll be my turn. She speaks and I hear right. my name. What can I say? <laughs> the world doesn't revolve around you. Uh, uh, Cinemoira is dead. No, right. it, round, it revolves around Barry, let's be honest. Yeah, all of our worlds our are... Baby. We need to keep Barry safe. <laughs> all right, well, the baby as safe. you say that, uh, this individual right here, who is behind Elora, uh, sees his captain in Barry's arms being ripped to shreds, and he's going to, with advantage, uh, attack his short sword. Uh, I don't think Barry takes poison damage. Barry doesn't take any damage unless that's a magical sword he's using. Because it's not magical. That's right. All right. So then that was a waste of the turn. The captain <laughs> shouts out. <laughs> what are you waiting for? Get him. Get the summoner. And he's going to battle command. And uh, choose one creature within 30 feet of the drow. The drow can see if the creature is... Uh, uh, he's blinded, so he I can't, can't see. see. <laughs> <laughs> Perma blinded, too. All right, well... What are you going to do? Hit me with then. that thick. He's going to try to take out his scimitar. Uh, and it is a magical scimitar, as he is the captain. Makes... Two scimitar attacks. So a 16 and a 14. A 14? Uh, to 14. hit Barry. Barry. Uh, wow, wow. Uh, yeah, I think those both hit him. He doesn't get his AC until next, until we kill all these guys. All right, and then he grabs his whip to try and grab a bone off of Barry's rib and it pulls it through and does another five points of damage. Does not Sweet. Uh, so uh, just the 14 and the 27. He is blinded. I apologize. He's blinded. That 10 does yeah. not hit. Yeah, cool. So only that 14. Thank you. Take 12. Uh, all right. These individuals, they hear grab the summoner. Uh, are they blinded again? For four uh, everybody except for the guy right in front of me. All right. So he's going to come over to you. Doesn't really. He knows where about you are, but can't really see to get uh, flanking. Uh, actually, I'm going to roll a deep percentile. Above a 50, he gets flanking. He does not get flanking. Uh, and he is going to come at you with his short sword, just waving it wildly with a two natural... My God! God damn. He just hears... <laughs> uh, this guy's paralyzed. He ain't going anywhere. Is there a save on He that? does get a save at the end of his turn. It's a wisdom What's his ass, baby boy? Seven. That's gonna be a fail. Love these rolls. They're great. <laughs> uh, this individual hey, is gonna get them out stumble now, around Barry, and at this point he is flanking, so it will just be normal rolls. <gasps> Ugh. Twenty-eight. 
22 and 21 to hit Elora. Uh, these will hit, yeah. All right, eight piercing. Uh, do you take poison damage? Uh, half. All right, Beauteous. And then this individual stumbles forward, 5, 10, 15, 20, and two attacks on Elora. 18, 16. Uh, both miss. Actually, that 21 and missed, five. too. Okay, so I need to take those points. All right. And this one comes forward with advantage, both normal rolls. 16, 10. Both miss. miss. Uh, I already moved him. Forgot to click. And then last one is right by Kalor. Uh, so this Kalor one is going to... Uh, it's going to turn around to Cinna. Okay. It's going to attack Cinna with a 21 and a 19. Uh, <laughs> fuck you too. 9, 16, 14, 30. 30 points of damage. Unless you have any resistance to poison. I don't think I do. Pretty boy. Uh, so big boy right here is up and running, just not super great. He actually has like, he's almost dead. Not anymore, he's not. <laughs> oh yeah, he needs a turn in the turn order. Oh, good call. Holy moly! What the fuck? He's Sorry. like, take my biggest spell, bitch. That's more biggest than my health. health biggest boy. <laughs> oh Jesus, really? <laughs> Got yeah. Our poor up. little squishies. I just, I, uh, I do, I do just yell, "What the fuck!" to, to Kurt. Oh, and, right, Kurt. Uh, Were you gonna share see. that with the rest of the class? <laughs> nope, just wrong person. How does Sporalina, uh, what does Sporalina say when she sees Kurt uh, just use this immense spell on the fun giant? What, are you trying to get into Mushroom Heaven since you killed all the other ones? <laughs> nope, I'm just trying to keep us alive. I just blow Kurt's a kiss. You guys see the fun giant. Feel invigorated. And Elora. All right, Barry's going to do some smashes on the card, Captain. When did you turn Australia? How would you like to kill him? Yes. Uh, he How just would you like to kill him a lot. <laughs> <laughs> one hand just slams him onto the ground, and the other one just keeps hitting his head. And the first one just like smashes it, but then he just keeps hitting it just out of just automation at that. point. Um and then it's like a machine stuck in a uh, attack. Pretty precise. Like, uh, bonus action. He is going to gaze at the uh, guy who's not blinded. So we wisdom. DC fifteen. Uh, he is paralyzed. Ah. I love my rolls, guys. Really <laughs> I know you're rolling like me today. Um. Everybody okay. around else is um, blinded. Uh, Laura is going to turn around and swing with the uh, with the. Uh, uh, with advantage. And those are both going to be crit. Uh, so another seven and another 11, 18. Like yeah, okay. So yeah, just, uh, vivisect him once. And as is the top part of his body's falling, I just slice it neck to, uh, bottom of the shoulder. Um, and then I'm going to pow, 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 Um, fuck, that's four attacks of advantage. I feel like some AOE is about to drop. Um, do I take it? Fuck it, I'm gonna take it. I'll stand right here. Gonna take it like a woman. Take it like a woman. Or Lena. Okay. I'm gonna need uh all four of those baddies and uh our beloved bone golem to make dexterity saving throws, please. Well, Barry got a five. Good at. Uh, they're at disadvantage, and they need a 19 to save, so they all fail. 
Um, <laughs> as you see Sporlina, like her eyes go like pure black with like clouds start to form around her and she pulls from the gra or from the air and slams a massive whirlwind down upon you. Um... Yeah, technically they don't have disadvantage, they just automatically fail if it requires. Oh. Oh, I don't know. Oh, DC 17? Oh, my, my DC's wrong on here. Huh? How dare yeah, they? no, my DC is 19. I think it's just because I don't have all of my stuff equipped correctly on D&D Beyond because I don't normally use it, but I forgot to put all my 7th level spells in my roll 20 sheet. Okay, well, they all take 27 points of damage anyway. As you see a whirlwind uh, come after all of you, and I think Barry also takes this. As do I. As do I. Um, and that's a concentration, so I keep it up. Uh, she keeps it up. I keep it up. Mm. And I have to double check that there's not anything else. Because there's just like a ton. Um, oh, everybody that fails also needs to make a strength saving throw. Pretty sure they all fail. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so everybody who fails are also restrained in the whirlwind until the spell ends. When you start its turn restrained by the whirlwind, the creature is pulled five feet higher inside it. Unless the creature is at the top, a restrained creature moves with the whirlwind, whirlwind and falls when the spell ends unless the creature has some means to stay afloat. Nice. And a, a restrained creature can use an action to make a strength or dexterity check uh, against my spell save DC. If possible, the creature is no longer restrained by the whirlwind and is hurled, taking 3d6 times, or sorry, is hurled 3d6 times 10 feet away from it in a random direction. Ooh. All right. 3d6 times 10 feet. Times 10. Yeah. That's uh, like an average of 90 feet. All my yes. movement. Um, and that is me turn. As you guys see this, uh, this whirlwind effect, kind of like a tornado, you see the fun giant, like, waving his hands. Oh. As he's, like, trying to wave his hand to swat a fly, uh, a.k.a. the drow, and uh, missing completely, but, like, just trying. Oh, oh, he's doing a great oh. job. <laughs> You're doing uh, great, Cinemora. honey. All right, I'm going to attack this lovely beastie again. All right. Big swipes. 19 will hit. What's an advantage, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she rolled twice. Oh, I thought she got to attack. My, my bad, my bad. No, no, no that was uh, that was last campaign. Um, and then I am going to give Bardic Inspiration to Barry. Barry, mama. As he's flying around my tornado. <laughs> it's giving. I feel like it's, Barry's the only person that would be having a lot of fun in this. It's giving him ideas I, and visions of 60 more bodies around. Let's make this happen, everybody. <laughs> he's hungry. He's just drooling, actually. You guys think it's raining, but it's actually Barry Wait. just drooling. Bear, doesn't Barry still have the flying carpet tied around his neck i think he does oh shit i totally forgot about that okay cool we're good we, let's keep going <laughs> hey Laura. it's fine everything's fine i'm gonna since i've not lost my concentration i'm gonna use my action to siphon some more life out of this guy nice mm. it's a melee a spell attack so you get advantage yeah Hey, very nice. nice. Ah. Aww. Wait, is, you well, have you have inspiration. You do. Oh, oh yeah. yes, a D10. I, 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 come here, D10. Come here. So you hit. <laughs> oh, a, a one is all you needed. So <laughs> that'll hit. <laughs> uh -huh. What can I say? Come on, guys, Scott. You gotta make it up to me now. Come on. 
You gotta make it up to your sister. <laughs> there we That's go. Fair enough. Fair enough. And the That's chronic energies bl blow through him. You see his eyes just completely necrify uh, in front of Cinemora. Cinemora, you see this firsthand. Uh, as you look behind, <laughs> and you can see Kaylor's hand just outstretched, grabbing the back of this guy's skull. Uh, anything else, Kaylor? Uh, the laughter from your sister. That's it. I want to suck your blood. All right. So if they're restrained, can they do anything really? They can't move. Their speed is zero. But can they? But they're in they a whirlwind. Attempt... Can they like attempt to attack you? Yeah, they're still they're yeah. still right next to me. They have, well, actually, at the be is it the beginning of their turn they have to make the save? They'll still be within five feet of me, but they may be lifted off the. Which would I would assume, not give them flanking till they're flanking in the air. Yeah, they're not. They I don't think they can be flanking. Oh, um, actually, Barry cannot be sucked up in because he's too big. Yeah, it's medium or smaller. Noise. Right, well, um, they're gonna go for attack against Aurora. I mean, they would. I would say that they have disadvantage, basically. But... Okay, uh, nineteen and a sixteen. Miss, miss. All right. Teamwork. Giants. Smacks uh, him. He is going to use his fungi use two slam attacks, so he's gonna slam. His advantage. Uh, I'm just gonna because uh, they're restrained. That is right. And blinded. So he's gonna grab one of them with a 19 plus 12 nice. i think that will hit yeah. and he's gonna do it to this guy right in the corner and let me get the dice roller just fling him and this is that didn't have a sheet ready for this friendly giant you knew we were gonna try and save all right uh sporlina what do they see as the fun giant just whoosh, swats one right out Oh, he fucking flies, bro. Okay, hold on. Let me just hold on. Uh, what did I say? Three d six. Three d six times ten. Oh wait, that was eight. Hold on, wrong one. Hundred and twenty <laughs> feet. Flies a hundred and twenty feet directly into another large mushroom, and then just crumbles to the ground. Oh Hideous. my god! I fucking love him. <laughs> All right, he is elsewhere in life uh and, and he just got a natural funny, by the way, on this next one. i saw that so, <laughs> that is, uh, 29 times two and i'm not doing math how would you like this guy let's go ahead and fling him <laughs> oh yeah same same basically Ow! follow me uh let's see 3d i just want to see how far he goes 3d6 so 110 feet, uh, the, like the opposite direction of the other guy. We're basically playing uh, uh, T-ball, you know, where like they put the ball on the thing. That's what this guy, <laughs> that's what the mushroom is doing. All right, this guy is taking his wisdom save with a 17. That's a fail, just that's barely. Fail. Just barely. And then... Oh, wait, sorry. That's against Barry's DC. No, that, that's it. All right, he, well, it's the end of his turn anyway, so it doesn't matter. No longer paralyzed. This guy's dead. And this guy will take his two short sword attacks against the against uh, you, which doesn't matter. Kurtz, wrap it up. I put a pretty bow on it. I don't think I can. My AOEs aren't big enough. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Just this year round big mushroom boy. And... Yeah, we'll go third level. This feels like a carnival game. Oh, nice, guy. <laughs> nice. 27. He's now glowing. And that's it. He's paralyzed, uh, isn't he? So no, he a... just, he's not paralyzed. Oh, but he okay. is blinded, so. Actually, he's dead. So does, he just barely killed him. No, oh, not that he's guy. Gone. It's this guy. He think, he think, right? Oh, Her? that guy in the background? Well, then he's definitely dead. Nice. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck that little spell cast. Glowing Explodifies him. All right. Anything else, Kurtz? Uh, that'd be all. Elora. Uh, we'll go ahead and take Elora's turn first, and we're going to go uh, 
two smack, or I'll, let's do first smack to the guy on my left. Oh, that was the wrong one, but that's okay. How would you like to kill him? Uh, I just, uh, like, I cut him off at the knees and just kick him over. And then in just like a f in part of that as full swing, sword comes back around to the hit. How would you like to kill him? Uh, that one's like from a uh, hip to the top of the uh, top of the shoulder as I come full swing and plant my foot in the ground. Blood sprays off of my great sword. It's fully clean and I sheave it. I forget this guy's turn. I did forget this guy's turn. He's gonna go right now. Sorry. Sorry, Spoilina. Uh, he's going to... He sees what just happened as his buddies just got flung. Uh, yeah, he's he's making a run for it. So, Cinna and Kalor, if you have any melee reactions, you're welcome to use it. Alrighty. And Barry's gonna catch up with him if you guys miss, just FYI. That one. Ooh, yeah, I miss. Was it, it was an advantage, though, because they were flanking when he left. Kaylor, do you have any would melee it be? reactions? Um, yeah, it would be. Let me see. 18 just hits, full damage. Oh, thank yes. you. Slice him up, baby. Nice. Oh, no, he parried you guys like a butthole. Well, the <laughs> first one he does. He yeah, can only do one. one. Oh, okay. Uh, Smack on the back of the head, kid. Gets him. Go ahead and do some damage. Thunk. Thunk. I'm going to assume this is a one-handed. Yeah. All right. Two points of damage. As he turns back around, as he's fleeing away, he is going to shoot at Kalor with a 23 to hit. Con save, please. What a beach. You are good from poison, but you still take 10 piercing damage. And he's going to get to around there. Cinemoira. You skip me. I Sporlina. I'm sorry. <laughs> and Barry, but I'll let Sporlina get the kill. Thanks. Um, okay. Okay, I'm going to need everybody in the whirlwind to either make a strength saving throw or a deck saving throw their choice. Seeing as they're all dead, except for your companion. So it's just me. Can you drop concentration? Oh, oh I didn't know that. I'm sorry. Were they... Yeah, I forgot to label it. Oh, I didn't see the... That's why. Okay, great. Never mind. Uh, I will drop concentration gently so my sweet, beautiful Alora can fall to the ground. Um, And then I guess I'll fucking just look at that guy and just be like, Hey, you're you're ugly and I don't like you. U G L Y, you definitely got no alibi. Cause they ugly. all did. Uh, uh, you ugly. Um, I don't need anything aggressive to kill this guy. I don't think. Overkills are the best kills. Is it though? Tell yes. me you don't want to shove a tree token down somebody's throat. Um, I'm gonna cast. Uh, I'm just gonna just to make sure I'm close enough. I'm gonna cast blight at this guy trying to run away. All right, con save. Nineteen. So he meets. So he takes what is that? Thirteen points of damage. Thirty-one and a half is six, 15. Wait, I see 27. Plus four, because of the higher Plus level Plus four, cast. it's a higher level cast, baby. Ooh. So, what did I say? 13, 15, yep. plus two. Guess what? It's <laughs> 69. Yes! And now it's at 71, and that'll kill him. Nice. Yes! Right on Very the nice. Dot. Right on the dot. Uh, chef's kiss, bro. As That's battle... what you get for fucking with mushrooms, bitch! <laughs> As the battle comes to a close, 
uh, you see the fun giant uh, begin to just, um, what's it called, stomp on the dead bodies. Spore Lena, tell him to, tell him to stop, tell him to stop. Crunch. Oh, crunch, oh, crunch, oh, crunch. no, honey, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I know you're upset. I'm upset too. Uh, let me look at your, let me look at your boo-boos. I kind of like, I uh, quickly kind of uh, meander over here and I start pouring kombucha into his like gashes. And Barry like pulls like one of the armor suits that the body's kind of like partially liquefied in, holds it up and goes, Barry, as if to say, it'll do. <laughs> like holding up a t-shirt. <laughs> uh, question, Jesse. Don't uh, answer it, Jesse. So at the beginning of this battle, there were like 12 or 13 of these guys, and you said that there were already some dead uh, when we got here. So about how many bodies are around? Well, there's eight that we fought, I believe. He was right. deleting three them in the extra, last one. Three extra on top of that. Okay. Thank you. Uh, especially, I'm focusing a lot of the kombucha on the burn parts of this poor fun guy because he's really going to need to uh, refertilize himself. All right. Uh, and I'm also sporing and using some of my spores to patch him. You see him uh, thank you in his fun giant. Do uh... you guys have a language? Uh, technically, no, but we can understand each other. Uh, I think if they was one, it would probably be druidic. It actually understands Fun Giant and Sylvan. Oh. I mean, I could speak to all plants, so... Does anybody speak Sylvan? I can't remember. Do I speak no. Sylvan? I do a have druid, a couple languages. No, it's yes, a... I, yes, I do speak yeah. Sylvan. Yeah. Yeah, Druidic Sylvan under common and common. As uh, you heal him, uh, he is going to animate fungi. Uh, the fungi animates the, and controls the mushroom, including toadstools and molds, within 180 feet at will. It takes uh, one full round for these mushrooms to uproot themselves. You guys see all around you these little tiny mushrooms just pop out of the ground. Smorlina is literally like clapping and jumping. <laughs> <laughs> just start coming at you all uh, immediately oh, surrounding Sporolina. Uh, and as it, uh, it surrounds Sporolina, uh, they kind of like morph into you and you regain eight plus four, 12 hit points. Nice. I don't like this, I don't like this. Oh my God, why are they- There are still plenty more toadstools as they kind of go on to uh, Kalor and Cinna. But you don't think that they would heal maybe Kaelor because he's decaying. <laughs> I, would, like, I would say Kaelor. Certain, they, they're, they're trying to heal, but you don't think that they offer the same kind of healing. Right. Uh, in in Sylvan, I'll say to him, thank you so much. Uh, always so helpful. Unfortunately, even though some of my friends might smell like death, uh, they aren't actually not. The mushrooms won't help them, but I am truly honored. Can, could could Cinna give a perception check to see if she could maybe understand what the hell like because I feel like she would know that she that Sporlene is talking about like the non decaying people. Oh yeah, um, you guys. I yeah, I, I would say that Sporlina would. I would say also Sporlina is probably translating a little bit for you guys. Just I don't, I don't think she would smell just... that bad. Okay, maybe I do smell that bad. Honestly, it's been a while since you guys had, like, a real shower, so. And some of us don't sweat. And by some of us, I mean literally only me. Well, me too. Uh, Kurt, you want to give me a hand with these bodies? As you say that, the fun giant grabs one of the bodies that it was stomping and takes the body over to one of the bulbous mushrooms that you saw earlier and just yeah. starts patching with the body and boom, boom, <laughs> boom, just kind of using its hand to pummel into the mushroom with this body as he goes over to reach for the next one. Uh, I'm, I'm like, Sporlina, you need to stop him. I need these. Um, Fungi, honey, do you think that we could borrow those um, bodies for our friends here? 
Barry just gives him like a seven toothy grin. And a, like a sad puppy dog look. Yeah, yeah, with with like twelve different eyes. Uh, you hear in Sylvan, uh, borrow for how long? Um, well, Barry won't live forever like us, so eventually Barry will be returned to the earth. <sighs> how could you say such a thing? Check. DC oh 18. god. Oh god. <laughs> Hey guys, guess what I'm like not super great at? Persuasion. Actually, I think I have a plus three. Let me see. For somebody who talks a lot, I really am not charismatic. Um. I would say you're charismatic oh. in your own way. <laughs> That's all right. I'm so sorry. I think. At th the real lesson that we're learning here, uh, Alora, is that Jeremy di or Jesse did not want you to have those bodies. <laughs> <laughs> there is a reason. It's not me. Uh, the... uh, what are you uh, using the bodies to feed with? To feed anyway? Ritual to fungus god. Uh oh. <laughs> what fungus god? The fungus god. It's it's not the natural force. I am one with the force, and the force is with me. <laughs> as he grabs the next body, uh, as he reaches for it, I'm just gonna spit blood at uh, not at him, but like at the ground near the body where he reaches, and it just the blood <laughs> bursts into flame around. No, no, no! We don't need to. We don't need to start our friends on fire. Just heal them. Come on. Uh, I just need to roll that to see if I took any damage. Uh, and I'm gonna just like uh, stand in front of the bodies and be like, "We killed them. We claim them." <laughs> uh, as the fun giant kind of gives a <clears throat> and slowly backs away from the fire that uh, erupted around his fingers. I'll be fair, and the three that he killed before we got there, I'll leave them for him. Well, the two, since he already took one. Oh. So I took 12 body. As the fun giant goes and continues to tend, uh, the toadstools all jump onto his body, and you can see it begin healing his body, similarly to how Sporlina was healed. Um, and yeah, so you have about a little bit of time. I assume Barry is going to absorb see these corpses. Uh, well, that's the ceremony. It'll take an hour, so I was going to do that when we if we want to do a short rest. Otherwise, I could do it when we do our long rest. We might as well do a short rest since we're here. Like, what's the point of carting around all of these bodies? I mean, unless this is where we could take a long rest, it wasn't our second half of our day trip. Oh, oh, that's right. So we would be taking a long rest right now anyway. Okay. Cool. Uh, yeah, so Barry starts pulling the bodies, like, like, like in an old cartoon, like grabs the head and pulls it, and the skeleton just comes out of the skin suit. And, uh begins uh cracking pelvises and basically plating himself up like armor uh in a very very uh naive attempt to uh look like his his mama's armor um and yeah so over the course of the next hour uh i will cast ceremony and upgrade him to tier five does he have max health though uh hold on just a second uh you hold on a second uh the tier five upgrade doesn't require him to be at, at full health at max health I think, every, I think every tier requires him to be at max health uh da, 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 it does I not intended. oh okay well it doesn't say that in here okay then that was my mistake that's all right uh, um that's fine he can, he can with the bodies? 
he can i mean th there's not really enough to get him to max max hit points right now he goes with necrotic damage right he does uh, uh hold on a second where is he uh but, 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 he, does, he is he does yeah. have the full max hp of of 250. uh i'm just reading stuff here real quick So he made it to his max, but now he's lower than his max. Hold on. Sorry. Uh, buh -buh. Yeah, I don't well, see anything in there about... While you are reading, uh, Sporlina, what are you doing for the long rest or right before it? Oh, um, Sporlina immediately gets naked again. Oh. It's hard-pressed to keep her clothed in the fungal forest. Someone's hard-pressing against you. <laughs> it's equal to half the necrotic damage dealt. Okay, so do you want us just to just pump him full of our necrotic spells since we're about to take a full rest? I have a cantrip, so I can just keep using that. Oh, there you go. Uh, Jesse ruled that it had to be at least a level one spell. That's not on his. That. Yeah, it's not on his character sheet, but we did talk about that. Uh, yeah, I don't yeah. see anything on here. It says he has to uh, absorb to increase the. He just at level, tier two, his maximum hit point increased to two fifty. Yeah, what's his? I, I, what's his the damage that, at? The way that I interpreted it was. The max goes up to 250, but as you are, you go from tier one to tier two or whatever, you're only at 150. So then you have to make your way up to 250, and then you get to get the tier upgrade. Is how I okay. Well, he he has a max HP of 250, so we can pump necrotic spells in to heal him up. He's at 177 right now. All right. Ooh, that's 58. So 29. Keep it coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. Hold on. You get advantage. I mean, there's you're gonna hit him. <laughs> uh, so the 35, 45, have 22. Uh, I need 22 more points. Uh, that's what 17, 18, 18. Oh, that'll do it. Right, that is enough. Uh, go ahead and spend those spell slots. Do not take a long rest yet, uh, because you guys are in the fungi forest, and there uh -huh. will be random encounters potentially. Uh, as you guys are getting ready for bed, the fun giant kind of goes elsewhere uh, nearby. Uh, you kind of hear like the low rumblings. Uh, he's probably a good 200, 300 feet away from you all. Can't see him in the in the fungus forest. Uh, it's pretty thick, but you can still hear his grumblings nearby. Great. All right, so, uh, Sporlina, what are you doing? You get naked? Yes, I get the naked. And then? Uh, and then, uh... I'm just gonna kind of like uh, go into uh, the stream and just like water myself and thank the natural force for letting me stay with my friends and that my friends brought my parents back to life. So at least I don't have to worry about them as much, even though I'm sure Jesse will find a way to kill them again. <laughs> and. <laughs> That was good old R&D, okay? Yeah. <laughs> RNG, not R&D. Uh, all right. Cinemoira, what do you do for, before bed? Um, I'm going to hang out with Barry and tell him what a good job he did today during this <gasps> big old battle. Who's a good boy? <laughs> yeah, basically, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just talk to him in a puppy dog voice and just, like, over-exaggerate my, like, hand movements and everything, but... The the thought is genuine and sincere. He did a very good job. And I am very okay. proud of him. Kaylor. Kaylor's just gonna Oh he's gonna just chill out 
watch Barry do his thing for a moment, and then take a good old nice long rest. Okay. A little grossed out by Barry. And Curtsy Boy? Uh, he's gonna kind of groom himself, comb out his probably long hair at this point, get all the fungus and grime out of it. And, you know, just uh, normal, right before bedtime, grooming and making sure his armor's okay. All right. And as you guys kind of settle in, and uh, also, what does Elora do after she is done doing the ceremony? Um, I assume she just sort of, like, finds a, a, a large mushroom and is, like, leaning on it, cleaning the... Uh... She actually doesn't really need to clean blood off of her because she had her blood armor on, so any blood that splashed on her just became part of that and then fell to the ground when the spell ended. Um, and she's, I assume she's just looking, like, smiling coyly at watching Cinemoira, uh, like, sit and play with Barry uh, as he, like, shows off his new armor to her. Um, but also, just really quick, I did... Sh looks like uh, you do have it for Tier 6... That in order to get to 350, it needs to use his absorb, absorb bones ability. Um, I think we may have talked about that before, but I have had that 250 cap since tier two, so I think I have uh, absorbed enough bones by this point to get up to that 250. Okay. So I, I, I did have it set as a max of 250 already. Gotcha, gotcha. All right. And I think that is it. All right, let's start rolling for randos. Uh, because you are in the middle of the fungi forest. Unless you have an alternative means of long resting. Um, no, I think we're just we're gonna rest in the uh, the mushroom glade. All right, first hour, eighteen or higher. Why did I roll a d12? <laughs> It'll never happen then. Second hour, eighteen. Third hour. 18. All right. I'm going to put you all right over here. Oops. I'm going to put Fun Giant over there. I'm going to put you all in the center of this little, little mushroom circle. Get rid of your Bright Inspiration. And, uh, Sproily now, roll a d100. Sure. I'll, I'll be the harbinger of bad news. Oh, it was almost cool. Obviously, Barry and I have been keeping watch. Well, yeah. I don't think all, any of us just, like, went nice. to sleep. Uh-oh. Thank God for divine abilities to regain a spell slot so I can recast Blood Arm. As you guys are resting, Elora and Barry are looking out. I would like a perception check, please. From all of us? Uh, just from Elora and Barry. Okay. If Barry is also doing it. All right. Can I, he give me the assist action? Sure. All right. So, so 16. 16. Uh, he just puts you up on his shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Now let me get to the character sheet real fast. They do have a little bit extra for a spell. I'm just going to run one for the group. Okay, the group <laughs> is not being loud. Uh, or being very loud. As they trudge through, you see a bunch of walking mushrooms. Very similar, but different to how Sporlina looks as they are coming in your general direction. And okay. About a group of ten of them. They don't, and they don't look like the other mushrooms that we fought. They look more like the fung fungi. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to uh, tap Barry on the shoulder, and he's going to go down and very gently tap Sporlina on the top of her top of her mushroom cap. It sounds uh, hollow, but kind of dense. Kind of spongy. Um, what's up, Barry? Boop. Mama, and I just, I just uh, look down at you and say, "Got some friends headed our way." 
Oh, great. Uh, I'm gonna fungal myself up. <laughs> uh, I'm a stay naked. And I'm gonna peep around to see if I recognize any, like, circle markings or if I can figure out if they are friendly from afar. All right, do a perception check. 28. Uh, you can tell that these are definitely not of your particular circle. Uh, they are from a different druidic circle. These are known as Funglet Grangers, and they are, in essence, rangers of the fungi forest. Uh, as for what circle they represent, you are not sure, but you do know that uh, that's all you know. Okay. Um, all right, Barry, I think we'll be okay. I mean, generally mushrooms aren't always, I mean, funglets of all kinds are generally nice. That doesn't, I mean, they're not always nice. I guess they're they're generally not evil, I guess. Well, I, so. I was thinking more about what your mom said about speaking to more tribes to see if we could garner some support. Oh, right. Do you think I should stay naked for this encounter? Are, are they naked? Uh, are, they are, actually are not. Uh, they have what looks to be some sort of a fungal whip as well as some sort of an armor made out of fungus. All right, all right. I put on my clothes so I'm not considered a harlot. <laughs> um, I, I, and I guess in Sylvan, I'll say, oh, hello, friends. It's not every day you see a Granger, especially a Granger party. They stop abruptly as one of them uh, comes a little bit closer and says, where is our giant friend? Oh, he's here. He was being attacked by a bunch of drow. It was awful, but we were able to save him and bring him back. And Barry pulls one of the drow bodies that's still hanging on him and just, like, chews on an arm. Uh, roll persuasion check, DC 12. I don't know if I should give you disadvantage for Barry holding up the dead body of the drow. Persuasion, you said? Yeah, DC 12. Double. Oh, damn. Right. Ah, join us. <laughs> so no, is actually no, a very we, beautiful we, we are good. She's a beautiful funglet. Like, you she's her, the hottest of all of them. You see her ruffle her fungi. And mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> as she does this, the other uh, funglet granger looks behind him and goes, uh, Weapons down. I think they might be telling the truth. Uh, we do not generally welcome outsiders into this area and if you did help our friend and as you say this the fun giant comes barreling through ah uh, good Hi, to buddy. see you friend as um the head individual looks to you and just says please turn around and go back and we will not have to do any more interacting. Uh, I'm actually sorry to tell you this, but um, we are on a mission and we are just staying here to rest and then we shall leave. Although our mission might involve you considering, uh, you know, you live in the Underdark and <clears throat> I'm sorry, the Underworld and uh, you are at risk as any. Uh, the drow are coming and they are coming in large forces. No fungal god is going to protect you for long. If I were you, I would take up arms and protect yourself. We have already done such. We don't need help from outsiders. The drow stay on their side of the rift while we stay on ours. Um, The drow were literally just here, babe killing your friend. Actually, they killed your friend. I brought them back. Kurt is asleep. <laughs> um, I I was the one who brought him oh, back. Oh, that's true. You did so. the first. <laughs> is this true? As the fun giant uh, ex exclaims in Sylvan uh, that it is true that the drow did, were here, the dark elves, as the individual looks to you and kind of like scratches his head uh his head cap a little bit as spores kind of fall down a little bit um hmm. 
What can you offer us? Um, help. Uh, my circle has. Uh, what am I? Called? What am I? And um, my Adier circle has already uh, taken up arms and started uh, readying themselves for the battle that we assume is going to be taking place at. Is it Halath? What place it is, is it? Halath. It's Halath. That we're assuming is going to be taking place at Halath. They are gathering forces, and um, I don't think I need to tell you that there are a lot of drow, but we are doing our best to gather as many people on our side as possible. Just because drow run parts of the Underdark doesn't mean they have the right to all of it. We have no interest on going into Halath, but we do have interest in stabilizing the Fungi Forest. Would you be willing to work with us and help us stabilize the Fungi Forest? In exchange, we will let you pass freely through our lands. I was gonna make some snarky remark, but I am not awake. I don't mean to be rude because I understand where you're coming from. But um, that does not sound like a deal for me. That sounds like a deal for you. Uh, my group is very capable, very powerful, and very able to make it through these lands without your help. Um, so I'm not really seeing what's in it for me. If you are incapable or perhaps afraid uh, to stand up to the evils of this plane that is on your conscious and your conscious alone but I will not help you for some defunct passage that I don't need to ask your permission for anyway persuasion check who <laughs> yeah, yeah. oh that is a sorry, I, my, my mouse literally clicked something back Right, Cinna. I'm asleep. Not Cinna. Oh my gosh. That's <laughs> <Like>... <laughs> Too many people to remember. Um, then I just believe... know that funglets are proud. So like basically being like, oh, so you big baby? Oh, you big baby? <laughs> if you You're are so strong, baby. then you can help us take back the rift ruins, and then you can cross the rift wherever you see fit. That rhymed. Uh, yeah, are you are you relaying this to me from your Sylvan conversation? Yeah. Uh, ask them if they're too cowardly to fight what they could offer us for the oncoming battle that would be of use to us. If you have no desire to fight, um, and to protect all lands, not just your own. That's fine, that's your business. But if you have anything to offer us, as well as the Rift Passage, then we will be happy to help you. But to be quite honest with you, I'm still not sure how I feel that this is, us passing through the Rift is a benefit to us. Do I know what the Rift is? Can I? <laughs> Now that I think about it, I'm not sure. You, you are very aware as Sporolina. Okay. Uh, yeah. The rift is quite literally a rift between the east and the west of the Fungi Forest. You cannot get over the rift unless you go to uh, one of the ancient ladder ruins. Um, or turn into farts them, and fly over. Many of them are very much uh, already broken or snapped or what have you. Um, let me show you an example. You may have so like this over here okay is like the rift and it goes all the way northward okay so we'll have to pass it to keep moving through this area absolutely you will have okay. to get there eventually if you want to know what we can offer you in one of the rift ruins we have a spice exotic spices herbs fungi and mineral hoard 
We become drug dealers! <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> These exotic spices and herbs and fungi and minerals can be used in a plethora of different magical reactions, alchemical or not, and it can help you in your way, potentially, or harm others in your hmm. way. Okay, Granger boy, I think I, I think that's a fair trade-off. Uh, would you mind if we have a rest and then we will be fully prepared to uh, destroy thy enemies? If you would like, we can guide you back to our temples where it is safer. What a lovely idea. Uh, one second. And it's really the turns around in like full common and just screams, get the fuck up! <laughs> and just to see everyone like just jerk awake. <laughs> As everybody's getting up and uh, informed of what's going on, Barry, uh, with his little superhero cape on, uh, he flies up to meet the mushroom giant face to face and uh, pulls a skull off his shoulder and offers it to him. Cute. And he takes it. And Barry blushes with like 17 sets of cheeks. <laughs> oh, does Barry have a crush? And he sort of I mean, flies I mean, around in a circle before landing back. Shit. Both of them slam shit and enjoy dismembering bodies, so I feel like that is a niche that you won't be able to find in many creatures. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, there is a spider on my window, and it is fucking massive. Nice. Are you nice. going to send us a picture? picture? What? I... I saw a TikTok of somebody who had a uh, wasp's nest uh, that was being that had been built over their Arcadia door, so they could see inside of it. It was terrifying. Oh shit! I lost it. Oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay. so these individuals—it's uh, crawling. Uh, these individuals—they uh, begin walking you with the fun giant back to their area and I will ping it as to where it is um, on this map and I will move all of you to that area and it is particularly these approaching and I got things to read hold on let me read it so that's why I have it A grand temple, shaped like a mushroom, uh, stands here, towering above the surrounding forest. Uh, you can see it is made from the same petrified fungus that you saw earlier with those bulbous uh, mushrooms, or what you thought were mushrooms, with the uh, decaying bones inside of them. Uh, Sprouting from the stem of the temple are larger fungal growths. Uh, you can see that this has uh, a doorway in it. Actually, I'm just going to freaking bring it to you. Uh, I'm going to assume you cannot see it. Uh, I see a black screen. Cool, cool, cool. Ditto. Copy. And paste. Oh, okay. That's good. Sim light. Oh god, it's blinding. There we go. Uh, I'm gonna turn this guy's dynamic lighting up a lot. There we go. Cute cool artwork. Oh, it is cute. Oh my god, you guys were climbing up the ma <laughs> up the mushroom. All right, so you guys see this massive building, uh, this temple. There are three of these temples and multiple other buildings around this area. Uh, the Grangers come over and uh, usher you into one of the temples. And uh, as you guys enter, you can see this area is currently... A dirt workshop. I'm gonna bring you over here. 
There you go. That so, looks like a butthole. <laughs> currently, there is dirt all over the place, and uh, the fung, the grangers just say, you may rest here if you wish. Please do not go upstairs. That is where the slave quarters are. And then our ritual chambers are at the highest, which you might be able to participate in if you wish. Actually, you will participate in. We would like to show you what our rituals entail. Insight. <laughs> it's like, yeah. that. Go ahead. I would like, like to invite you. Baby sacrifice. <laughs> uh, it wasn't malice. Uh, it was okay. not, um, like, threatening. He legitimately wants you to see what their rituals are. Okay, I just, I wanted to make sure that my little humanoid Your friends weren't was about great, to be. Good, sir. It, it was the pausing, I think, that made me a little nervous. <laughs> it was no, very you, much, you will. <laughs> I'd like to have you for dinner uh, energy. Very strawed. Very strawed energy. Uh, um, straw came back as a mushroom. <laughs> Uh, I am gonna go take a nappy now. Go na nice. Go Mimi's. Uh, Sperlina does get naked again. And then, like, half buries herself in the dirt floor. You okay. see one of the Grangers kind of turn back before they go up the stairs and just kind of give an eye and then... Oh, Sporlina is into it. She bends over at the waist without her be without bending her knees. Very bend and you snap. You see his legs and feet start to go up the stairs, but his head stays stable, you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> Cartoon-esque. Yeah, cartoon oh, I am in my element, ladies and gentlemen. Um, oh, okay. So it's fine Spirulina. when you get naked, but not when I get naked. I you can get naked. The, the, we're, a bunch of, we're a bunch of druids. It's Humans are the ones that are prudes. And to be fair, she doesn't try to fuck everything when she gets naked. Generally a... not. Name one person. Uh, two, the several. dragon. Yeah, the dragon. <laughs> the, the pirate princess. The two, now your wife. The two drow uh, captain. Uh, first of all, shut up. <laughs> Second of all, good night. I just start throwing dirt clots at Kurt. <laughs> just like, not also, to like actually hurt him, but to just like smack him. Sporlina. Yes, darling. The, okay, hypothetically, hypothetically speaking, we're in a mushroom, right? Is this like the equivalent of gingerbread men living in a gingerbread house? Like, you're made of the same thing you're living in? I mean, I yeah, but... More. And don't get me wrong, like, all mushrooms have some sort form of sentience, right? But when you look at me, I'm like... Like a like a person who graduated from like a four year university and has a doctorate, and this guy, as I like kind of pat the mushroom, uh, dropped out in the sixth grade. You know what I'm saying? I just okay. That wasn't really the question, but okay. Uh, it, it was just wondering if you like are cool with living or at least staying the night in something that's basically. A skin uh, you were you house. were you were in Sporlina's house, and her house was also made out of mushrooms. No, I know, but it's just it's just clicking with me now <laughs> that we're in a skin house. Yeah. Oh, well, I think I think when it comes to this, it's different. It's not like a human living in a house made out of flesh. Hey, more like monkey skin. <laughs> right. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Monkey and monkey or skin houses skins. are quite warm. I would assume so, yeah. And honestly, um, funglets are very kind creatures in the sense that we always ask permission to our large mushroom friends, and most of them are incredibly happy to house us. And they're treated very well, they're fed very well, they're taken care of, they're protected from storms. I mean, it's great when you are a solitary mushroom that's not able to move. Okay. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't weird for you. Is it weird for you? No, it's it's just more of a interesting concern at this point. <laughs> I will say um, it does sometimes feel funny when you touch a mushroom house and you have a mushroom hand. <laughs> you know what? Uh, do you touch it? 
Yeah. Uh, make a nature check. Okay. You know what else is funny? Back in the civilized world, we sit in small rooms and poop into pipes that suck our poop outside. <laughs> Uh, this thing starts to kill me, I guess. Uh, with that natural one. Yeah. I mean, it's a skill check, technically, so, so it's really you, only a 13. You're, you, are, you are positive that the whole structure is, in fact, not fungus. Hmm. There are aspects, like, there's a little fungi growing on the walls and shit, but, like, the whole structure itself, not fungus. Uh, as I'm, like, touching it, I, I look at it, and I... I'm now I'm like I'm like taking off little pieces of it and like pulling out my herbalism kit and stuff trying to figure out what the fuck this is. I assume bone. Uh can I assist? Uh sure. 25. Uh as you take out your herbalism kit, you do find little mushrooms like little to toadstools inside. Uh but you also find little pieces of bone here and there. Yes. This is, in fact, oh. uh, all petrified fungus mixed with bones and corpses. Making um, it a so very actually... fertile ground, by the way. Right. Um, so, Cinna, remember when I said um, it wouldn't exactly be like humans inside a, a human skin shelter? Um, <laughs> yeah. Fun fact, uh, this is not just mushroom. It's like petrified tree. What the fuck are you talking about? And, uh, is this definitely, a mushroom? It looks like a mushroom. I mean, it was definitely formed to look like a mushroom. What do you mean? Uh, what is it? I think of it as like concrete uh, or like other strong building materials. Uh, petrified mushrooms, uh, you know, maybe some heavy clay, uh, just a little bit of hu humanoid bones. As, as you're Ooh. telling her this, everybody else is getting ready for bed, so it's really quiet in there. And you start to realize you're hearing like a strange like slurping sound and it looks like Barry's just sitting up against the wall. But as you like lean back, you can see his back has like four mouths open on his back that are just licking the wall. <laughs> Barry. Snowsberry. He plays talk snowsberries. <laughs> Barry as you guys also creature. listen, <laughs> you can hear uh, individual. You can hear what sounds like yelling upstairs. Is everyone okay up there? Is it Sylvan or in Undercommon or Common? Uh, do perception check. My perception check! Can we all do perception? If we're all hearing screaming? Sure. Hey. Hey, little bill. Nice. Jesus. An impossible roll. Uh, no. Why am I hearing screaming? Uh, I would say Elora and Cinna. Elora, you can hear that it is certainly uh, under common. And Cinna, you can make out. Um... You thick fucks! Come on, let me go! I don't belong here! I'm not one of them! Uh. Let, let's go figure out what that is, guys. Well, they did say there were slaves up there, and I feel like it's really funny that we all just glossed over that. <laughs> we're none of us going to talk about it, or... We promised war slaves to people. I don't know if we get to really... You know... They were fallen, enthusiastic volunteers. I think that's what uh -huh. I did. <laughs> oh, I was sure, talking about the drought prisoners. Sure, let's still just prisoners, go and check but... out what the noise was, shall we? Drows don't count, and that didn't sound like a drow, right? It's saying like undercommon, but they weren't saying they were saying that they weren't one of them. I I assume that means dry, but you never know. Um, can we do this in the morning? Because I would really like a long rest. We just took a long rest. No, we did it, bitch. We were interrupted in our rest. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there was no sleeping. Let's just say we send one person, make a sneaky sneak up, and um, how f how far up is the staircase go? Uh, From go to, the uh, to the next door. Yeah, if you go to the base of the staircase, it's probably a solid thirty feet up. All right. 
I give my head to Barry. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, so let's uh, let's do the doctor in the head in the bag trick again. Oh my god. Uh, I give my head to Kurtz. Oh god. Every fucking time. Yes. Alora, there's no need to lose your head, okay? Literally and figuratively. And Kurtz is just gonna walk upstairs with the head in the bag. With the eye holes. Alright, do you do stealthily or not stealthily? Uh, I'm gonna risk it for the biscuit and not go stealthily. Because uh, okay. uh, that will probably make it seem worse, because my stealth is bad. You're like, just I'm just looking for the bathroom. Uh, well, you even know, though they might... specifically said not to go up there. <laughs> well, you know, I might be able to convince them that uh, humanoids need a humanoid doctor. You know, want some uh, good healthy slaves. Oh, I don't like saying that. Yeah, don't say that. All right, let's go. All right, as you begin to head up the stairs with the head of Alora, you guys watch uh, nonchalantly. You're in the corner, kind of on the ground, uh, watching Kurtz go up there. And Kurtz, as you're about 10 or 5 feet from the top of poking your head up above uh, the staircase, uh, you hear, What are you doing? You're not supposed to be up here yet. You can come up here tomorrow, though. Well, you know, we, I just heard some screaming, and, you know, I am yes, a doctor. those are the slaves. Well, no, if they're screaming, they might, you know, need a little bit of checkup. I'm just here to, you know, make sure your slaves are in tip-top condition. I am a uh, certifi certified slave inspector back home. <laughs> make a deception check. <laughs> You're getting absolutely no help from me from this. So oh. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> hey, not bad. Good work. Thank you for being a slave inspector, but we know what we are doing, and they they won't last long, don't worry. Okay. What do you mean by that? Uh or any any anything we should ask? Or you good? Um can you toss me up there stealthily and then ask if they've seen my head? <laughs> sure, why not? Let's try it. Oh my god. Seem to have lost something. Do you actually throw his head up? Uh, yeah, I'm going to act like I'm going downstairs and I'm going to trip and kind of throw my bag backwards. Up the stairs. That's, that's a, and, that is quite the stretch. Um... And fall the rest of the way down the stairs. <laughs> All right. First off, uh, above a forty, you take damage for falling the rest of the way down the stairs. Oh, I'll take it. Uh, it's fine. Oh yeah. And we're gonna say thirty feet. So you're just gonna tumble down the stairs, taking ten points of damage. Uh, and as you do, I'm gonna need a sleight of hand to whip. Uh, like you're, you're like bobbling the head, and you like whip it up at, by accident. My head gives the uh, assist action. Make it this look like... No. This will be <laughs> the DC of 12. A DC of 12. 10. As you chuck Alora's head up, it hits the ceiling just where the hole is, where the stairs are, and then oh, tumbles God. all the way oh, down. You down son of a bitch! All the way down to 12 points of damage as Alora's head hits the ground. <laughs> Kurtz, your fucking fork is in my forehead. Should have dropped that down. I'll pull the fork out of her head. And throw it back to her body. It pulls like a, an, uh, I was gonna say an eye or something. What was that like? Pirates of the Caribbean when he pulls the eye. Out <laughs> yeah, on the fork. wooden. Yeah. <laughs> well, All right. You well. Head back to yeah, I don't know. If we're not concerned about slaves, uh, then I guess we go to bed. We're good people. <laughs> Most of the time. All right, everyone. I'm gonna be crying myself to sleep tonight, but sure. Spend a ration and go ahead and take a long rest.
Ah, that feels nice. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Roll d100. Above a 90, something happens. Nope. Okay, we're good. All right, you guys wake up after the nice long rest. Well rested, and uh, it's pretty quiet in here now. Uh, but you guys wake up. What do you want to do? Cry a little uh, on the inside. Start <laughs> heading upstairs. As you guys begin to head upstairs, uh, one of the fungalets comes down and just says, Oh, you are up. All right. If you are ready for the ritual, and you may now come up, I guess. The rest of us are already up and getting ready. Splendid. As you guys begin heading your way up the stairs, I'm gonna move this over to here, and you see uh, several cells, and in one of them you see a colloid, an individual humanoid covered in crystal. Another one is a drow, battered and beaten, and another one is an ahul. You can see that the colloid seems to be uh, just kind of sitting down quietly, uh, crisscross applesauce. The drow is in uh, more or less a coma-like condition with uh, little beads and bulbs. What are they called? Um, blisters? Blisters all over their body. And the okay. ahul is uh, even more so. So you remember the dude, the ahul dude who is super, super bloated and fat? Uh, this Ahul looks very similar, um, but to the point where it's not necessarily fat, it looks like uh, injury? fat. Uh, injury and gas. Like, a lot of gas. In his oh, belly, yeah. in his chest, and a lot of boils that are very, very large. Can I just, like, vision-wise, can I do a nature check or maybe a medicine one? Uh, I'd allow a dual perception and um, medicine. I'll assist okay. with the medicine. So Sporolina kind of regales uh, to Kurtz what is going on as she explains to him uh, what's going on, and Kurtz uh, thinks about it for a minute as Sporolina also racks their brain. Uh, you are pretty certain that these humanoids are infected with some sort of a fungus that is taking over their body and bloating it. Oh no! Does Kurtz it look similar? Over his face. Uh, does it look like? Does it look similar to the other infected fungus we've seen? It's people we've seen exploded. Yeah. The bone sacks covered. Oh God damn it! They're making a quarry. Oh, there. You guys are also infected. Can <laughs> I don't. I guess I kind of say it like under my breath, but then I look at our the mushroom friends, our mushroom quote-unquote friends is there a check i could do to see if they seem any kind of like afflicted like our old circle leader was or any of that uh no these individuals uh the the grangers and such they look fine mm -hmm. they and would, are happy happy hunky dory would it would sporlina know with that medicine checker kurtz uh if this is considered a disease or a poison? Uh, let me see. I don't know. I'm going to go with a disease from what I've read. It is not similar to the to the uh, Xenoflora. Okay, okay. So these guys are just actually bad guys? That's cool. I just needed to know that. I need to know if they were actually bad guys or what. Um, have they mentioned what god they pray to? Uh, I assume the mushroom god. Just, just that there's not a name for it, or. Uh, <laughs> a large group of fungus gather here each day to feast and worship their mighty, in capitals, mushroom god. Does not have a name. To feast, uh, okay. Because the only thing that I've read in, like, 
the book for funglets that they like funglets prayed to was almost always the natural force. So then this so... might be like a small sect, a very small okay. sect. That okay. Okay. Yeah, because it doesn't seem like they're like the natural force kind of guys. <laughs> As we're like getting ready to climb to the next level and like. What's what's the play here? Are we going along with it for allies, or are we gonna fight our way out? I guess it's, it's, let's just uh, see where the the morning takes us. All right, but I mean, I I can handle it. But if Sinamoya gets covered in exploded guts, I don't think she's gonna forgive you for that. I'm not gonna be too thrilled. And understandable. Uh, roll a stealth check for this conversation. Natural one. This is sleight of hand. Oh, sorry. Much Still better. Much bad. better. All right. Uh, so Cinna, 16, 5. Uh, doing quick math. 21, 43. 16. Somewhere like that. All right, right it's like so 14. Four, I mean, mine is 14 plus 5, so I think it still beats you. Uh, yep. As the Granger is taking you up to the next floor, uh, he just goes, Oh, don't worry. The fungus will not affect you as long as we say it doesn't affect you. Inside. Sure, and I am not a six, seven foot tall dude wearing plate armor. Unless I say I am. Wow, here. Wow, Laura. <laughs> Jesse pressed the button and switched our roles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Kurtz and Sporlina, you are, uh, you're certain that they are, they are being serious. If, as long as they choose not to infect you, you will not be infected. As you okay. get up to the third floor, uh, you can see that this is an acolyte chambers and armory. Uh, the interior walls are about 10 foot wide corridors around the stairwell, and the doors and arches to access the holds, acolyte chambers, storage rooms, and the armory, armory containing equipment captured uh, from different individuals. You can see, like, uh, short swords from the drow, glaives from the drow, uh, weird sticks with sharpened stones at the end, uh, different, uh, just all sorts of different weapons of all different kinds of creatures. Um, not just drow, but lots of different people here as well, uh, many different grangers. Uh, looks like they are just kind of relaxing, hanging out. That you, one of the doors is open, you see a bed, uh, and he continues to bring you up further. And as you guys follow, you are at the final level now. And as you get to the final level, uh, the Granger and several other Grangers are also here. And... Who the fuck is that? So, you guys see in front of you uh, an individual that introduces himself. I am the High Garland, I am the head priest here, or head druid, if you will, at the Mushroom Temple. You are our guests, and you have accepted a quest for us to take care of the different ruins and win them back for us, and in exchange you will receive some gifts from us. Also, we might reconsider joining this war effort if you can supply us with fresh humanoids to utilize. And what is with everybody that... in the underworld wanting humanoids? Because <laughs> we are just a, an invaluable commodity. We are just too valuable. I mean, well, as we said to um, other creatures who have desired for uh, meat sacks, uh, when there is war there is definitely prisoners of war. So as long as drow is something that whets your whistle, I'm sure we can more than make that happen. Very good. Now, if you please step over here and we can show you what our rituals entail. Step right onto the big red X. Don't mind the liver. Wrong <laughs> liver! You guys see an individual... Oh, no, no, no. Uh, comatose, way worse than the Akul, bloated to all hell, blisters covering the body, uh, and fungal little uh, toadstools coming out of its body. Again, not really moving, barely breathing, and bloated beyond belief. 
Yeah, I'm gonna just stay away from that. I'm gonna go into my bag and pull out a parasol and hand it to Santa Moira. <laughs> Thank you. Medicine check to see what they, well, I assume were at this point. Sure. Uh, they were, go ahead and make a medicine check. Buried as like a happy dog sit, sit and opens up like 12 different mouths. Uh, all right, with that 15, you can tell that they were uh, human. And did you ever meet Jared Kalor's from Subway? From his business. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> yeah. oh, uh... No, we didn't. You might not recognize him. The only one who would would be Kalor. Kalor, if you would like to make a perception check to see the <sighs> GC 15, if you can recognize him. Because he's okay. loaded to all hell. Let's see. You got this. Uh, you notice that this is, in fact, Jared, the junior informant who filled out all the paperwork for you uh, many weeks ago. And uh, a greenhorn, definitely a greenhorn in the line of business that you are in. But he is bloated beyond all hell. And as the Grangers circle around him, you notice this. Ah, poor bastard. As the doesn't want to stop it apparently. All right. <laughs> uh, uh, no, no, no. I, I nope. Morlini, you don't know what's going on. Yeah, you know, only Kaylor knows what's going. On. I'm like, I'm, I'm like, I I, 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 go over to my friend. I'm like, bro, oh, hey, that guy I worked with, he's, well, he's over there. I guess he's food now. <laughs> who are you? Who are you whispering this to? Uh. How about Sporolita? Yeah, let's do Sporolita. Yeah, um... Make a... I'll accept a sleight of hand or a stealth. Alright. I mean, he's saying it and... In... Oh my god! He's the <laughs> wispiest whisperer wow. of all. You just, like, throw your voice like a ventriloquist, mm. and it just goes right into Sporolita's ear. <laughs> that tickles. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I can't help myself. Um, I almost spit my water. <laughs> I, I'm gonna kind of walk over to Kalor, and I'm just gonna start patting his head, um, and then uh, I will try and whisper back and say, "I'm so sorry. I think it might be too." Y'all, y'all know that I can cure disease with the touch of my hands. You're just keeping that to yourself for dramatic effect, right? What? Perfect. <laughs> y'all know that I can cure disease with the touch of my hand. I'm just saying. Anyway, I'm sorry. Continue with your uh, lovely ceremony. Please do not interrupt. I'll stand over there as the druids. There's about six druids that stand around Jared, uh, who is a bloated mess at this point. And uh, let's see. Why is the you evil guys... one constantly trying to do the right thing? <laughs> Y'all just do terror. <laughs> uh, let's see. I need to read the description. Y'all really play in the gray, is all I'm saying. That's my alignment. I'm also, this isn't the worst thing we've done. Not even close. Ah, okay, here we go. Uh, so, you guys see, as the druids raise their hands over this body, and uh, you could see the magic flowing through them, and the body begins to levitate, similar from the levitate spell. As the body is slowly lifted into the air, it becomes central into uh, the chamber and goes up and up and up. The ceiling is about 30 feet high, and as they do, uh, you can hear the ritual they are chanting in some sort of a sylvan language. Uh, sylvan language. And you can hear Sporlina. What they're saying is something along the lines of uh, 
accept our this flesh and turn into fertile ground for us. Uh, accept this blood and turn it into the our drink and accept this uh, meat and turn it into food for sustenance uh, and accept these bones for the structure of our, uh, the foundation of our uh, uh, faith. And mm. as it goes hey, higher and higher. Hey, Macarena. Elora. I was just making a decision. Cool. As it goes higher and higher, um, you see that the bloatedness becomes more and more and more until <clears throat> as it explodes and splatters all around the walls, the ceiling, and of course, the floor. As chunks fall and rain upon you and blood, etc. As uh, you see the funglets grab onto chunks of meat and begin eating the chunks of meat. Any bones that are found are actually uh, kind of placed into an organized pile around them. Uh, and the blood just kind of stays... Barry's, like, just itching. Uh, Barry's got his mouth open for that explosion, and when the blood and gore hits him, it's it goes into slow-mo, and you just hear that... Barry's gonna leave us for this these people. <laughs> and as, uh, as the blood begins to, like, drip down the walls, you can see the different funglets, after they take some bites out of the flesh... They reach out and they extend their arms, and these arms, uh, similar to Groot from Guardians of the Galaxy, extend out to like 15 feet, and very slowly, not anything that could be used for combat, but uh, very slowly, and they begin to move the blood around the wall, making like an abstract art out of it. And as they do this, you look around, you can see where uh, this, the blood has dried for other corpses, and the kind of art that is being made every single time a corpse explodes. And as they finish, you can see this beautiful piece on the walls, and a pile of bones, and a little bit of flesh is left over as they come to you and just say, you are welcome to participate, but you are not forced. And he kind of hands you a thing of flesh. I... will take a bite. I... <clears throat> Sort of looks at it knowing damn well she's full vegan. She doesn't even <laughs> eat human cheese. <laughs> um, yummy! And I like pretend to eat it and I throw it over my shoulder to Barry. <laughs> <laughs> you just see Barry's one of like his seven. <laughs> just just one, one mouth grabs it and then five other heads turn expectantly. Uh, all right. And as the Granger, uh, they finish up and they collect their bones and they say, all right, you may follow us as they head back down the stairs. Did you enjoy the ritual? Did the art please? I, I, it's it was certainly and, something. Um, fragrant, even, one might say. Um... Is that uh, your own concoction that you uh, fill the humanoid with? It is some of our magics. We follow the old ways of the Druidic life. I understand that right. not all tribes do so nowadays. And that I actually is think. Right. I think most don't. I think honestly, for a lot of people, they just don't uh, like. The mess or the they don't have the amount of time to dedicate as you guys do it's impressive though and uh something to be admired something that we discussed as uh the rest of the group is also walking downstairs the something that we discussed uh last night actually we have been choked off of the supply of slaves that we can rebuild our foundation from and that is, of course, due to the drow themselves. Yeah, the they're kind of ruining we, everyone's life. The more and more that we consider your proposal, the more and more that a tenant of the underworld is often the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And I think we are willing to 
make it worth your while to assist us even further. I, I, well, I'm sure that me and my companions will uh, do whatever we can to help, uh, within reason, obviously. All right. Well, follow us down to the main chamber after we put these bones into uh, our foundation. And as they do, they exit out the fungi temple and head over to one of the bulbous uh, smaller mushrooms. And you could see that there was a portion that was uh, incomplete, if you will. And they put the bones there and then they cast some sort of a magic where the petrified bones and it's like paste. And you see little toad toadstools and fungi just kind of close the gap with the bones itself, similarly to how you found it uh, last session. Um, and again, you're being followed by a group of around six uh, grangers as the High Garland uh, looks to you all and just says, So, we are looking for assistance at the Rift Ruins. There are three major ruins to be found. We had the Eastern Rift Ruin, but no longer. That is where you will find our horde of spices, herbs, fungi, and minerals that you are welcome to if you should find it. Who has taken over the ruin? First, in the central ruin, a uh, central rift ruin, it is the stronghold of the fungus queen, Devona. She has many minions under her control. We believe she uses some sort of a fungus to trap their minds and make them do her bidding. From what we saw, she has Drowds, drows, shambling mounds, violet fungi, fungus leshies, dark dark stalkers, and recently, she has acquired a very impressive minion, a minotaur that stays by her side. It is to our understanding that she has quarrel with the current leader of the Eastern Rift Ruins. Um, okay. What a bitch. How rude of her to just, like, take your ancestral grounds. Well, um, they're not necessarily our ancestral grounds. Well, I mean, technically they don't specifically belong to anybody, right? We did not create the ruins or the structures around. But neither did unknown. she. Yeah, so, but you guys have had it in your control for a long time, so it's only fair to give it back to you. Um, uh, could you, what's her name again? Queen what? The Fungus Queen Devona. D-E-V-O-N-A. Um, I, I gave you a religion and a history check. Uh, that was like based off of just like I didn't know what to do for her. It, I mean, I'm assuming if he's a queen fungus, I would have heard of her at least. But is she evil? She sounds evil. She's working with the drow and has all these like undead creatures around her. Uh, by the sounds of it, it sounds like she controls like her minions through uh, mind control, according to this individual. Whether they are working in spores, mind control spores. I uh, as for that religion check, you know a little bit. When a tribe of fungus leshies decaying burping pool grows to a certain size, a single leshy arises from the mass of rotting vegetation. This creature has the combined knowledge and understanding of all the individuals whose mass contributed to the pool, along with a charismatic presence and a will to lead. More than overseeing a tribe, however, this new queen yearns for all she can see to become embroiled in her decay. A fungus queen's desires are unquenchable and entirely selfish. A nation of united leshy serves only to see the queen's gaze set upon a new horizon of conquest. More than any usual fungus leshy that might be encountered, these monarchs want everything for themselves and are willing to sacrifice just about anything for even the smallest eventual gain. They command troops 
to fulfill their every whim, knowing that individual leshies are but mere organics to be recycled. The same greed that drives a queen also compels them to protect their leshies from useless destruction by an outside force. Even those who simply take advantage of a leshy have stolen from the queen and may soon find themselves added to the compost heap. Oh, this is going to be satisfying. Could you, so, Aloria, um, do you normally look like you have a headache, or is it just right now? I know, I'm fine with all this. I'm just surprised the rest of you are. Why, Queen Tavona is a jerk. And she uses people to control their minds. True. Uses spores to control their minds. Uses spores to control their minds. But we're also talking about allying with people that grab slaves and then artificially inflate them till they pop. Um, I'm sorry, are we also not uh, allied with a bunch of evil bat people that are using dra drow slaves for, for a very similar purpose? Oh no, absolutely, and I was surprised y'all went along with that one as well. Okay, then. So, why don't you keep the judgmental tone down a bit? Okay. Why didn't you eat a piece of bacon? <laughs> because pigs are cute, you monster. Humanoids, not so much. Anyway. Flesh, bitch. Continuing <laughs> on, the Eastern Rift Ruins are controlled by a succubus named Styrixis. And she routinely makes raids against the fungi queen's territory. She is accompanied by some demons, but other than that, that is all that we know of her. Ah, can you spell the name for me, please? Uh, S T Y R R I X I S. That's a name. Here's what we do: we make a contract with the demons to kill the queen. And by that, they have to leave until after the war is done, and then we come back and help them kill these mushroom people so that they can get their ruins back. Wow. That's an idea. That works for me. Secret Devil Cross. Never saw it come in. And lastly, the Western Ruins is controlled by two different tribes of uh, veggie pygmies. Oh, veggie pygmies are so cute, though. What do they look like? Yeah, until they attack and raid your territory, then they aren't exactly the cutest. What do these but... things look like? Uh, uh, they kind of look like, uh, what's his name? Uh, is it Odds World? <laughs> That's kind of what he looks like, they look like to me. Okay. In my head, I'm being uh, like Oddish from Pokemon. Curtis <laughs> is still eating the uh, piece of Jared. It's very <laughs> chewy. Is it um, <laughs> is it fresh? Piece. Human jerky. Uh, we it, just saw a guy explode. That yeah. Ain't, yeah, I was gonna say that ain't fresh. jerky yet. So, whichever you wish to take on first, you are welcome to see any any way that you see fit is a welcome addition to uh, our battlements. Sick, sick. Um, I'm gonna look at the one of the cute, tall mushroom boys that were rubbernecking me, getting naked last night. Um, I will require his assistance specifically, though. Who, Jim? Why? Mm -hmm. Oh, those are kind of scary. Oh, those aren't the say. ones. That, those aren't the pictures I have. So, what do your pictures look like? I'll show you. I'll send it in the Discord. Uh, those are creepy-looking little fuckers. Well, you know, I, I'm just, I think it would be best if we have somebody to lead the way to exactly where they are, and who better than your people? Roll persuasion check. <laughs> Not a 
not a thirst trap check. <laughs> I'll let you. I'll give you advantage. I'll give you advantage. Uh, DC fifteen. Oh, yes! Yeah. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> All right, uh, Jimbo, go go with them. Hi, Jimmy. Hi. <laughs> this oh is going to be fun. Oh, dear boy, she's going to eat him alive. Run, boy, run. This world is not meant for <laughs> be, you. Would be Stay fairly poetic, right though, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, Jesse, uh, this is going to be out of character. Um, would killing a spore person count as adding to rations? Yeah, I mean it's mushroom. A a you can eat mushrooms. I mean, technically, killing a humanoid you could add to rations if you're desperate. Yeah. <laughs> Talking to the man who is eating Jared. <laughs> I'd say yeah. Cool, 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 cool. All I right. put the picture of veggie pygmies that I know in Discord, by the way. They're still kind of creepy looking. Not gonna That's lie. even worse. I think they're so cute with their dumb little faces and no noses. And, and those are perfectly okay. And they mount yeah. those things. I forget what those things are called. You can think they are absolutely adorable. I don't think they are very cute, but that is just my personal preference, and you are allowed yours. Fair. Do they kind of oh. remind me of the the people, the little fairy people from Game of Thrones? Yes, absolutely they do. <laughs> are those people bombastically badass? Yes, they are. Alright, so. so we're eating Jim later. Oh god. Alright, let's go. Alright, are you planning on going out now? Well, we are fully we gonna... rested, so might as well. Okay, very good. Come on, Jimmy. Report back to me as soon as possible. Take whichever rift ruins you wish first. So just to recap, it's Mushroom Queen with mind-bending spores. It's a succubus and some demons, and the third one was what? Those little pygmies. Oh, the veg pygmies. Right. Yeah, the veg pygmies. Oh, they're called thornies. Thornies are the things that they ride. Okay. Well, this should be fun. I mean, I think with veggie pygmies, it'll be pretty easy to get them to at least maybe be on our side. They enjoy eating the same things as these mushroom folks do. Um... Okay, I'm actually speaking about the veggie pig me as I know. I don't know about the ones that are in this campaign. Uh, do I they will do eat... some reconnaissance for you and let you know. Okay, cool. Okay, because I know that, like, they... Because I'm putting... I have... I literally just wrote up character sheets for these guys. That's why. That's the only reason why I know so much about them. Okay. Um, yeah, so they're also kin to mushroom folk. I mean, they're one of us, so I'm sure it'll be easy to uh, maybe get them on our side for a little bit, at least. Secondary thought. We convinced the pygmies to attack the queen uh, because they're veggie people and less likely to be affected by sports. Uh, we convinced the queen to attack the demons because she's already got mind control over her, her subjects and the demons won't be able to mind control over it. And we convinced the demons to the pygmies because they're vegetables and the demons use fire. And we just let them all battle each other to the death. And then we go and get a point. Go to the Winchester, have a cool point, wait for all this to blow over. <laughs> Precisely. Sure. Pretty good plan. I like it. Uh, uh, which one's the pygmies? On pygmies first? The... Yeah, I'm saying pygmies, pygmies first. All right. Uh, I guess follow me for now. Oh, no, forever. I forgot ever. Jim was there. Jesus. Um, yeah, Jimmy, we'll follow you for as long as you'd like. <laughs> <laughs> it's not very often I meet a boy that's taller than me. <laughs> 
how tall he but... is. How tall are you? Uh, Sporlina is actually very tall. Let me see. I think like seven feet. After watching that display, Kurt throws up in the. I was gonna say bushes, but I guess the mushrooms. Just throw up into Barry's mouth. Honestly, the bushes probably oh. enjoy it. Uh... Throwing up into Barry's mouth. I don't. I don't want to picture that. You could use one on his leg if it's less awkward. Do it. <laughs> All right. He, I'm sure he won't mind. Barry's the bar for something. He's about six point five feet tall. Oh, I'm definitely taller than him. Dang it. Ooh. It's okay. <laughs> you could have lied to me, Jesse, and said he was 10 feet tall. I mean, we can do whatever we want. Uh, all right, so begins heading off in that general direction. And as you guys continue on your next leg of the adventure, I think that is where we will end for tonight. To the ruins! Uh, uh, yeah, I just looked, I'm at nine and a half feet tall. Level 14. No, what? we just got level 13. <laughs> and he was begrudging last time. I in know. His <laughs> level 15? <laughs> no. But yeah, uh, I now know what I need to prepare for in the next session, so that's good. And you got, uh, wait, no, we do have one more session before you're out of town. We will not be playing on the, f the fourth. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, we will not be playing on the fourth. But we will play next week. I will be trying to get my children asleep as the fireworks go yeah. off and off and off. Ugh, praying for At least you don't have dogs and children. Yeah, that's true. Ugh. I mean, you have cats, but I'm assuming they probably just hide. Like yeah, most cats, right? Dogs. Yeah. <laughs> the world could be ending, and they're like, just leave me be. <laughs> all right. Uh, well, we get the hell out. Thank you all so much. Love uh, you guys. Good night. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night.